In this video, we'll talk about DNA versus histone methylation. Methylation is one kind of epigenetic mark that can be put on DNA or even histone. But what is the difference between these two processes? It turns out both these kind of modification can have different effect on gene expression regulation. So we need to understand both these processes and in this video we'll first talk about uh, DNA methylation and then we'll talk about histone methylation. So these are the two important parts that would be covered in this video. DNA methylation is the process by which particular residues in the DNA get methylated and this happens with the help of the enzyme DNA methyltransferase and this is an epigenetic regulation. So biologically, DNA methylation is super important for various processes like embryonic development, genomic imprinting, X chromosome inactivation and preservation of chromosome stability. Inside a gene, there could be different regions which could be methylated like the promoter or like the gene body. But the consequence of methylation in these two different regions are different. For example, Generally, the promoter methylation is associated with gene inactivation or repression of the transcription. Whereas, in many of these cases, gene body methylation promotes transcription. But how methylation in two different regions can do two different outcome? We have to understand more. Let's talk about promoter methylation. Now, promoter methylation can also be tissue specific. Imagine we have three different cell types and this is a gene type A. Obviously, this gene would not be expressed everywhere. Possibly in the neuron, the promoter is not methylated at all and the gene is active. Compared to the neuron, fibroblast and epithelial cell has methylation in this gene promoter and hence this gene is inactive in these cell types, suggesting DNA methylation could be an important regulator of gene expression. But who writes and erases this DNA methylation? The writer is methyltransferase and the eraser is demethylase. And these DNA methyltransferase are super important and these are, these, these are understood from the embryonic experiments in rodents. Mouse with a mutation in DNMT1 has developmental defect and eventually uh, ultimately lead to lethality because there is a transposon when, which is uh, not properly methylated lead to altered translocation leading to problem in the overall chromosome. Similarly, DNMT3 mutant has problems in a testicular development and eventually has meiotic failures. DNA methylation during embryonic development fluctuates dramatically from E0 to E13 Till the blastocyst stage, the CPG methylation percentage decreases dramatically. But after the implantation of blastocyst, methylation percentage increase again. So DNA methylation changes during development is a really important aspect to understand. So how does methylation lead to gene silencing? When there is methyl marks, there could be interference with the binding of transcription factors or RNA polymerase in that region. Moreover, there could be proteins like methyl DNA binding proteins which can impede this process further. It can also attract other proteins like HDAC or deacetylases which further deacetylate nearby histones thereby compacting the overall chromatin and silencing gene expression. Now DNA is not the only thing which is methylated. Histones can also get methylated. So let's talk about the histone methylation in the second part of this video. Besides DNA, the second site where methylation can occur is the histones. So here we are looking at the N-terminal tail of the histone and there are several residues which can get methylated. Generally lysine and arginine are the site for histone methylation. So which molecules actually help in histone methylation? We have talked about DNA methyltransferases. So in this case, there would be HMTs or histone methyltransferases that lead to histone methylation. And what is the consequence of histone methylation? Again, this is context specific because there could be transcriptional activation or transcriptional repression as well. 
हिस्टोन मिथाइलेशन कुड बी मोनोमिथाइलेशन डाइमिथाइलेशन और ट्राइमिथाइलेशन ईच हैज़ देयर ओन कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज इन टर्म्स ऑफ जीन एक्सप्रेशन सो नाउ आई होप यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द ओवरऑल डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन डी एन एंड हिस्टोन मिथाइलेशन just like dna methylation histone methylation can also be present at the euchromatin region or in the heterochromatin region the type of modifications that are present in hetero versus euchromatin region are very different remember the uh, dna methylation can occur in promoter and gene body each has different consequences on gene expression promoter was mostly repressing the gene and uh, gene body methylation was mostly activating the transcription so now question comes that who writes the methylation who erases methylation and who reads the methyl uh, methyl mark on the histone so histone methyl transferases are the writers then erasers are histone demethylases and the proteins which contains chromo domain can actually read the methylation mark and the inherent message in the uh, methylation marks so there are specific proteins such as set d1a along with several partners known as set d1 complex can lead to trimethylation in this case the residue is h3k4 and this trimethylation can be recognized by further phd finger domain containing protein taf3 which binds to methylated lysine because this has a chromo domain and the consequence is activation of gene transcription but this is not a uniform uh, notion because sometimes what happens like in this case h3k4 trimethylation is recognized by kdm5c and this particular modification is kind of removed and removal of this methylation has different consequences now sometimes there are other residues such as h3k9 methylation recognized uh, recognized by specific complex lead to this trimethylation this trimethylation has an opposite effect of gene activation because this is now recognized by hp1 protein which is also a chromo domain containing protein but leading to heterochromatinization so what is the moral of the story if we sum up these two examples so different readers lead to different molecular outcomes and the site of methylation on the histone itself brings out different context so these two important factors decides what happens and what is the outcome of histone methylation now during cell cellular differentiation from embryonic stem cell to differentiation cell uh, in many locus methylation at the histone can change we are looking at the hox13 and hox1 locus for an example so initially there is h3k27 trimethylation which is a repressive mark eventually these marks get uh, uh, kind of selectively altered by activatory combination of activatory and repressive mark and in the differentiated cell there is a salt and pepper expression of these activatory and repressive marks that ultimately decides what would happen to these gene locus whether activate whether they would be activated or repressed now we have looked at maternal imprinting in a different video right and we thought dna methylation is the key player but beside dna methylation histone methylation is also important in context of mat uh, basically maternal imprinting but question is how to experimentally understand that methylation happened in which location in the histone so basically here there is a situation one where we look we are looking at a trimethylation at h3k9 residue and this is one specific locus it's also possible that there are multiple locus where these methylation can occur how do i know which locus there is a methylation and it is associated with which particular dna component so it can be you it can be visualized using histone chipsic so specific methylated histone residues can be actually pulled down using antibody coated beads and the fragments can eventually be sequenced and this fragments would be aligned with respect to a genome and peak calling would be done so abundance of these fragments would tell us which lo location is supposed to be methylated so in this case we can see 
histone residues present in the uh, promoter region of this particular gene is actually uh, methylated. Now this can happen at a global level and we can understand this kind of methyl modification happened in which location of the genome. Now DNA methylation was important in organ development. Similarly, histone modification is also important for organ development. From brain to olfactory bulb to muscle to adipose tissue, there are different kind of DNA and histone methylation modifiers are present. Also during embryonic development, we looked at the fluctuation of DNA methylation. Similarly, histone methylation could also fluctuate during the period of embryonic development leading to different outcome. So I hope in this video you get a deeper understanding about histone and uh, DNA methylation. So stay tuned for more.